Hi there. Let's build the first section of our project, the header. So this is the sketch for the header as I showed you before. And on the right side is the final result that we'll get after this lecture. So we have a nice headline and two buttons in the middle and at the upper part we have the Omnifood logo and the navigation on the right side. It looks really great, right? So this is what we'll learn in this section. I think it is a good idea to tell you in each of the following lectures all the new things that you're going to learn in that lecture. This way, when you want to review these lectures someday, it will be easier for you to find what you're looking for. Also, you get a feeling of what you will achieve after each lecture. Now, this is the first lecture in which we'll actually build our website. And there is already so much to learn. We'll meet new HTML elements such as header, nav, ul and lie. We'll learn how to make a background image darker in CSS so that we can put text on it. We will learn how to make that image exactly as high as the browser viewport. And then we'll make a vertically and horizontally centered box with some text and buttons in it. And we'll actually design those buttons as well. Then we'll learn the best way to style links in CSS. And we'll even make a simple CSS3 animation with these buttons. And finally, we'll make a simple navigation. So let's waste no more time and go straight back to brackets. And so this is how we left our HTML document after the last lecture. We'll delete this, we don't need it anymore. And now we want to start building our header. And HTML actually has a nice element for us called exactly header. And this is where we will put the logo, the navigation, the hero image, the main heading and those buttons that I showed you in the images before. Now the header element works basically like a usual div element, which means that it's a container to put some content. There are other elements like that, like nav for navigation, the footer element for the footer, the main element for the main content, etc. By using the header element instead of a simple div, we tell search engines such as Google this is our header and not some div element with no meaning. So this gives our container a meaning. So let's start by create the HTML that we will then later style with CSS. And for that we need our content. I hope you already downloaded it. I have it here on my desktop. So let's just put it here and unzip it. All right, and down here we have the content. I made three files which have exactly the same content, one for Microsoft Word, one for the Mac app pages, and if you don't have any of those, just use this file. I will open this one. And so this is the content that we will put on our web page. And we're here at section zero, which is the header with hero image and navigation. And that's our headline. And I will just copy it because we'll need it in a minute. So back here. Um, as I told you, we will have a vertically and horizontally centered container where that headline will be. So let's first make a div element for that container. And I will call it hero text box because this is a text box which floats over the hero image, which is the big background image. All right, so this will be the box that we will center in a minute using some CSS. Now that main heading that we just copied 
and here it is. And now we want some buttons. And for buttons we use the link element that we will then style with CSS to make them look like nice designed buttons. So we need the href attribute and since we don't have anywhere to point at this moment, so we have no document where we want to link to, we put a dummy link and that's usually made using this hash symbol. So this link points nowhere right now. So let me just get the text. It is I am hungry and this button will later take us all the way down to the sign up section. And the second button will be show me more. So in this one, I'm just copying it here. So I'm hungry and now I've duplicated as I showed you before with command D or control D. And in here goes show me more. Alright, so now let's style the whole thing using CSS. But first, let's see how it looks like. Alright, so this is what we just put on our HTML file. So, let's style it here. And add a new rule here for the header. And the first thing that we're going to do is to set the background image. And in order to do that, let's go back to our folder. And we have the OmniFood contents and the background image that OmniFood gave us is called where it, hero, it's hero image. So this is the image that we will use as our background image. I actually got this image from one of the resources that you can find in the course ebook. Okay, so you probably already know where to put this. It's in the resources folder, CSS, and then images because it's a background image. And we will use it in the CSS file, from the CSS file. So now, how do we use this in CSS? It's quite simple. Just say background image and then we use URL IMG and then the hero.jpg. So this is our image. Very easy to incorporate, right? We can even see if that's the correct image and yeah, it is. So let's see how this looks like. All right, now the problem that you see is that the image only fills the part that has some content here. So what we want to do now is to make this header as high as the viewport, which means from here all the way down here. So we want to fill the whole viewport with the image. So we need to set the height of the header element. And how do we do, it, do that? There's a simple trick, which is this one. We just set it to 100 view h. And this means it's 100% of the viewport. Very simple. So let's see if it worked. All right, now the image looks like we want it. Now we have some problem here, which is this white space here, and I will tell you why this happens. This is pretty annoying, it's because of this H1 element, which has a, I will tell you this, using the Chrome developer tools, as I showed you before. Let me just show you this quickly. So as you see, with the, the orange bars, this has some margin, top and bottom. And this is because of the normalize CSS file. So we have to get rid of that before we can do anything else. 
this is really annoying. So let me just margin zero. And now it should have been go gone. Now the image doesn't look quite as we want it, right? Because it's way too zoomed in. So we have to tell the browser in some way that we want to see the whole image. And we do this using the background size. Background um, size. And we say cover. And also we want to have the background centered. So we use background position, position center. And that's much nicer. Very, very good. Now, if we would resize this window, it will always find a way to let us see all the image. So now let's find a way to center this box which has this title and those buttons that we'll style in a minute. So this is called, let me see, hero text box. We'll copy it actually and paste it here. So how do we do this? We will actually not use the responsive fluid grid that we set up before because we want this box to be an absolutely positioned box. Because that's the only way we can vertically and horizontally center it. And I will assign the width of the row, which is, if you remember, 1140 40 pixels. So this will look like a row because it has the same width, but it will be absolutely positioned. And in order to do that, we say, we want it 50% from the top and 50% from the left. So let's see what it looks like. So 50% from the left, and 50% from the top. Okay, but this looks weird, right? So we have to use a little trick here, which is with the transform property. And we use translate, and then minus 50%, minus 50%. And what this does, is to translate the element half of its width and of its height up and to the left. All right. So now it is centered, it's nicely centered as you want. So it always stays in the middle here. Now, as you can see, the contrast between the text and the image is way too low. For example, right here, we have a very hard time to see anything. And that's what we learned uh, right in the first section, in the web design section, that it is a bad idea to just put text on image. And we're going to use one of the solutions, which is simply make the image darker. So let's see how we can do that. So the little trick that we use here is that we'll put a linear gradient on top of the image. So this is like using two background images at the same time. So we have this linear gradient and the image that we just specified before. And in here we can say two colors. Let me start with black so that you can get the idea. And since we don't want a gradient, actually, we want just a color, we make it from black to black. So from one color to the same color. Now, since we don't want a complete black, we use the transparency here. 
then let's say, let's put it to 70 percent transparency so as we saw before when we use transparency it changes here to this rgba code so i will just put the same thing here and now we have this nice 70% uh, transparent black color which is on top of the hero image and this is how it looks much better right okay so I think the background image here is now formatted so let's end the first part of building our header right here in the next video we'll start to format the main heading here and these two buttons.